So VCI has been, VCI Entertainment has been in the home video game for a really long time, and they have been putting out just all manner of older films, occasionally a newer film too, but usually old films, a lot of times kind of obscure films, and I love it. I love old obscure movies. I love films from a period I was not alive or a period that I was not able to see things in the theater, and I love new old movies, new to me. Now, if you if you look around in the landscape, there's a lot of the same old movies playing in theaters and popping up on cable and being re-released on video again and again. But I'm always a sucker for films from the eras that I love, let's say 60s, 70s era, that I've never heard of before, that star people I've heard of. And what we're talking about today is one of those titles. New on Blu-ray from VCI is 1970s, not the 70s, but from 1970, The Gamblers. Now, this is a movie I'd never heard of. It just showed up in my, in my review pile, and I was like, ooh, what's this? I recognize those people. Stars Don Gordon, who you'd probably recognize. Stars uh, Stuart Margolin, who most people know as Angel from uh, Rockford Files. Have the 45 of that theme song, actually. And, uh, Faith Domergue, which I think is how you pronounce that. And Susie Kendall, who I always knew as being the female lead in Dario Argento's Bird with the Crystal Plumage from the very same year, 1970, of this film. So what is this film about? about 92 minutes. You know, surprisingly, this film is rated G. Now, you think back to the way the ratings used to be in the 70s up into the early 80s, and it, it, you had a lot of films that weren't necessarily, nowadays, rated G means animated for kids, and PG means for kids, and PG-13 means for teenagers. But back then, you could have a movie that was really aimed at adults that didn't have anything objectionable in it, and if the objectionable material wasn't there, it could be rated G, and that's what we have here. This isn't a kid's film by any stretch. There is, you know, sauciness, but nothing explicit. There's no profanity. It's just a straight-ahead caper movie. This is a caper movie that stars the people I talked about. Oh, also, Richard Eng, Richard NG, Hong Kong actor who's been in a ton of stuff over the years, who I predominantly knew from his work in 80s and 90s Hong Kong comedies. Uh, he's one of the stars of this movie, speaking English throughout. I guess my understanding of Richard Eng is that he had uh, gone to school in England and he had a really, and he was from Hong Kong, which was a British colony anyway, but he had really strong mastery of English that he just never used in the Hong Kong movie. So it's interesting to see him here just speaking English to everybody without the mustache that you'd come to come to know, but you, he, he has that look. You totally know it's Richard Eng. Anyway, film is presented in English with optional English subtitles. 92 minutes, as I said, it looks gorgeous. I will tell you about what this film is about. It just looks so good and the locations are so gorgeous that uh, it really won me over. So the basic story here is you have uh, Don Gordon, as I mentioned earlier, who again, I can't particularly say what he's been in, but if you see him, you'll be like, oh yeah, that guy. He was in a million things in the 70s. He is a card sharp. He is a guy who's really good with a deck of cards, maybe cheating, maybe not. And he has, his, Stuart Margolin is his sort of sidekick or aide or stooge or henchman or whatever you want to call him. And they set their sights on these two guys who seem to have a lot of money or they have these, our heroes, heroes seem to have knowledge that these two guys on this cruise ship that's coming into port seem to have a lot of money and they're going to try to take them for all they're worth. So the plot uh, unfurls upon this cruise ship. Susie Kendall's there. She sort of gets in well with these guys. She has an eye for Gordon, and Gordon has an eye for her. And it turns out, I'm not going to tell you the whole story. It turns out that Gordon uh, uh, is, he, he dupes these guys out of their money. I'm not, I'm not giving anything away. He dupes these guys out of their money, and they reveal that, you know, we are actually on our way to Dubrovnik, which is where most of this, in Croatia, where most of this film was shot. Uh, we're on our way to Dubrovnik uh, to really, to land a whale, so to speak, to land a guy with a lot of money and take him for all he's worth. And if you and your crew want to join our crew of two, we can split this cash up and make out pretty nicely. So then begins the caper of this film to lay the plot to, to hatch a plot, to lay the trap, to get this whale to get into a high stakes card game so these guys can just shake him down royally. So I won't tell you where it goes from there. What I will say is surprisingly, this film doesn't show that card game. It leads up to that card game. And again, I'm not giving anything away. It leads up to the card game and then you see the aftermath of the card game and the plot continues. And it was just kind of odd that it, this this it's like a heist movie that doesn't show you the heist, but it is relatively uh, innocuous and very charming throughout. Really fun score um, based on a story by Nikolai Gogol or a play, I guess, by Nikolai Gogol. And uh, it's just Stuart Margolin mugs a lot a little bit of a TV performance. The whole thing feels a little bit like a TV movie, but it's really well shot. It's on done on location. Uh, Susie Kendall is radiant. 
and uh, everybody else in it is is just really good. So um, it's 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 a fun movie. It's kind of in the scheme of things, inconsequential. It's one of those movies I'd never heard of. There is a commentary. The one extra on this is, let's see, is a commentary by Robert Kelly, Robert Kelly, noted film historian, who does a great job sort of talking about the people in the film and did, did his research to say that this film did not get much of a theatrical release, but it did play a lot on TV, like in the 70s into the 80s. And this is the kind of thing you would catch late at night or on a you know, afternoon TV broadcast, and it would pass the time, and it was fun. I, I, I did enjoy it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this movie. It's not one that's terribly, uh, it's not well known at all. I'd never have ever heard it mentioned anywhere, but this is what I love. All of that is to say this. It looks phenomenal. It's a lot of fun. It's it's G-rated and inoffensive. It's got a really fun score, and uh, it's just a kind of a cozy late '60s place to visit, shall we say? Uh, what this is what I love about the era of home video we're in, and, and home video in general, is that this is the kind of thing that would not be played in a theater that does old movies. This is the kind of thing that generally not would not show up on cable TV anymore, and bless VCI for taking the time and effort to resurrect something like this and get a really good transfer audio and video on this to let us see the kind of film that did play in theaters however briefly and did play on TV and was featuring people you've heard of so not again not a phenomenal not a classic but if you like 60s movies and early 70s movies like I like that kind of movie this is a film worth checking out. And if you love, it's in Croatia, but if you were dumb like me and somebody said, hey, it's south of France, or hey, it's Italy, you would believe it. It's got that early 70s, late 60s, really sleek Euro look to it. And it's just overall a, a lot of fun. So available now on Blu-ray from VCI Entertainment is from 1970, The Gamblers. Nothing at all to do with Kenny Rogers. Not a sequel to any of those TV movies.